The most important takeaway is that even in systems of impunity, there are ways of getting around it and to really bring about truth and justice. And our experience in, in studying countries around the world, even where there are amnesty laws, total amnesty laws, there have been four factors that have been able to overcome them. One is a strong demand from civil society and mobilization. Another is pressure internationally. The third is the strength of, and the leadership in the judiciary to find innovative methods. And the fourth is reducing the power of veto players. And this we think is true, this is possible in Mexico because we're already seeing demand from civil society for, to, to combat impunity for all of the human rights violations that are ongoing. We see a, more and more international links with those domestic groups. Uh, where there's probably the biggest deficit is around uh, the area of the judiciary and finding innovative ways to try cases, bring about cases, and also the the weakness or the strength of veto players to prevent this from happening. Um, and the reason why we think this is important is that where we've seen trials for human rights violations, we've also seen great improvements in the reduction of those human rights viol violations statistically. So if, there, if we can figure out a, a way to explain how that happens and then put that in, into action, we think this is a way to improve human rights. Well, the really important thing is the role that informal processes take. Um, that many, in many situations, and I think Mexico is a clear example of this, you can't wait for the state to take action. This really has to happen from a process from below, the role of the civil society in, in carrying this out. And uh, we have several models of that, but most transitional justice studies don't look at the informal processes, but rather the formal ones. And if, if we try and think about how those informal processes have worked, how to put them in place here, they might lead to a much more robust way of addressing the violations. that there is an important role that must be played in making visible what's happening in Mexico. Um, to give support for all of the groups that are mobilizing, more visibility for the action, the demand from below for a change, and give that support both internationally and also, you know, we as academics can play a key role in making visible these kinds of demands and actions that are taking place. I think without that pressure from outside Mexico on the, on the Mexican government, it's going to be hard to get anything to happen. We know that even with that international pressure, not much has changed. If we think about the Ayotinapa case of the, of the students, uh, all of the mobilization that has happened without any response from the government, it looks like it's going to be a hard road uh, to follow, but I think we can keep putting pressure on and sustain that, that pressure and that support from within and outside Mexico to bring it.